under the knife or not, a medical or for aesthetic reasons, this is the question which may arise when you hit a certain age in your life. We have with us Dr. Usha Rajagopal of San Francisco Plastic Surgery and Laser Center to share some light on this topic. Dr. Usha, welcome on the show. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure. So, what's the latest kind of cosmetic surgery? Um, it depends on your age. Uh, for the younger person, it could be some sort of body contouring procedure like a, a smart liposuction or ultrasonic liposuction. And obviously for the younger person with a large or not so pretty nose to get some nose reshaping. And as you get older, the procedures change. Um, for um, mothers or women who've had children and done with that, uh, maybe some sort of um, breast lift or enhancement along with some tightening of the tummy area that's been loosened with pregnancy would be the other option. And then as you get even older than that would be most men and women turn to their faces. So it would be uh, non-surgical procedures starting maybe even in their 30s like Botox or Restylane or skin care um, to improve their overall complexion. And then as you get older, obviously, then it would be surgery, like a facelift. What is a smart lipo? Smart lipo falls under the heading of laser lipolysis. So we actually lose, use a laser to break down fatty tissue and then the suctioning takes place. And the reason smart lipo is so popular is that it's certainly an outpatient procedure. For small areas, it can be done under very light anesthesia. Uh, and because of the heat generated from the laser, you can get a little bit of skin tightening with it. Oh. So some women who do not have a lot of excess skin, but just mild excess skin, may be able to get away with the liposuction instead of having a tummy tuck. Now, does tuck. that have less recovery time? Uh, yes. Usually liposuction has a little less recovery time than a tummy tuck. Usually for a tummy tuck, it's about, about two weeks or so. regular lipo, oh. smart lipo? It depends on the areas. So if you do a large area, recovery is going to be a little bit longer. Smaller area, recovery is a little faster. Now when we talk about recovery, I want to know if someone's, let's say, getting married mm -hmm. um, and uh, wants to, you know, get rid of a little fat here mm -hmm. and there to fit mm -hmm. into that gown. Mm -hmm. What kind of time did should that person have? Generally, the best uh, timeline is to at least go back six weeks because usually um, they're back to doing normal activities in about a week or so and exercise in about four weeks or so, but really to be able to feel really back to normal, to be able to dance, drink, d go swimming, whatever, what's planned, um, they can participate in after about six weeks. So six weeks is a good time. Six weeks. You know, um, I've considered sometimes on a down day yes. <laughs> to get it done, you know, lipo. But I always wonder, um, should there be a lifestyle change before you start? Because, you know, the reasons why you get lipo, because, you know, you maybe you don't work out enough or eat and, or, you know, genetics. Thanks. So do you think that there should, there should be like a warm up to getting a lipo? Like, you know, I'm going to change my diet and, you know, get on it. And so that when you're off of, when you get the lipo, you don't get it back on right exactly. away. Do you coach so people with that? a lot of these body contouring procedures, we want the patient to be at a stable weight and to be healthy. So what that means is we do not want a lot of weight shifts. Maybe five, ten pounds is okay, but not twenty pounds before or after. The worst thing you can do is have the lipo done and then gain a lot of weight because you will gain fat. It doesn't keep you from gaining fat. You will gain the fat back. What lipo does is it gives you a new starting point. Now, um, tell me about the uh, difference between a tuck and a lipo. You know, a lot of my friends would be, we want to do a little lipo, lipo, lipo. But do you think that really solves the problem? It, again, depends. Usually, if a woman, uh, before children, her abdominal skin is going to be pretty tight. She's not going to have stretch marks. She's going to, not going to have loose skin. And abdominal muscle itself usually is not separated. And so you can have liposuction because the skin will get tight very soon. And it certainly doesn't prevent you from, you know, with pregnancies and, and childbirth later, it doesn't affect it at all. The only thing she has to keep in mind is, again, we talked about healthy lifestyle before and after. Right. When you have kids, what happens is that, um, unfortunately, one of the things, you get a healthy baby girl or boy, but then along with it, you get a little bit of baggage. <laughs> you get um, a little fat deposit in the abdominal area that's very hard to get rid of, even with a healthy lifestyle afterwards. If your skin gets stretched, it's hard for it to tighten all the way. Usually in the first six months, the skin will tighten a little bit, but after about six months, things don't move much. Mm -hmm. And the last thing is stretch marks. 
and it's purely genetics whether you're going to get stretch yeah, marks yeah. or not. And so if you get stretch marks, there's no way to remove it with doing lipo. Um, and your muscle, the, the rectus muscle or the six-pack muscle, mm -hmm. can actually get separated. And the term is called muscle diastasis. If that happens, it actually gives you like a little protuberance, a little fullness to the tummy, even though you may not be fat. And so liposuction, again, can get rid of the loose muscles so than you, you do here. When you talk about these, uh, um, you know, problems that could arise out of a plastic surgery, mm -hmm. does the insurance cover all these problems? Usually, if it's an emergency, the insurance will cover it. Okay. And are we supposed to inform our insurance uh, before we go in under any plastic surgery? Um, there is no need to inform any insurance beforehand. Okay. We can just go and get it done. You can go ahead and have the surgery done, yes. Do you see a lot of Indians coming, walking through your door? I'm seeing more and more Indians yeah. coming in, yes. Because we're, we're really scared of getting it done. You see a lot of in different communities. Sure. But uh, What's the most common procedure that Indians come to Indians you for? Um, for y very young men and women, it's a rhinoplasty. Even men come and do it? Oh, yes. Yes. Even well, men come and do it. What do they do? Rhinoplasty. Either rhinoplasty. Mm -hmm. And then the second thing for younger men and women is I do a lot of what's called in men gynecomastia surgery mm -hmm. or when they have um, the non-technical term is man boobs, <laughs> when they have fuller chest and they're, you know, not very confident when they go out either with a thin shirt or shirtless. Yeah. And then for women, it's usually some sort of breast enhan enhancement or liposuction. So what about scars? Do you see Indians coming out with more scars after? Generally, with darker skin tones, your scar is going to be more visible. Having said that, some people, some Indians have wonderful scars and some Indians don't. So it really depends on your genetics. Um, so obviously, you want to do, we, we also offer a lot of scar care afterwards. There's several things you need to be start doing about a month after the surgery to prevent scar hypertrophy. And if there is, you, you really need follow up with your surgeon so they can help minimize the scars. We're cute for time, but there's so much more we want to know from you. We have to get you back on the show. Well, of and course. I'm sure if viewers want to write... Uh, about uh, plastic surgery or cosmetic surgery. If you have any questions, write to us at info at womennow.tv and Dr. Usha Rajagopal will answer that for you and we will address some of those next time when she's back in the studio.